You're not the only queer on stage. You need a mercy to be forgiven and be friend. It's all you've got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Oh, oh, oh. And all the people said amen. Said amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. We are strong, you know, love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And He so loved the world, He sent His Son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Oh, 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 and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for His love never ends. And all the people said amen. Let's it all the poor in spirit and the torn apart. Let's it all the persecuted and the pure in heart. Let's it all. The kingdom of God And all the people said amen oh, 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 oh. And all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord For His love never fails And all the people said amen oh, And all the people said amen oh, oh, oh. Good morning. Yeah, that is a great way to get us started for worship this morning. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome to worship, everyone. So glad you're here this morning. And a shout out to our Facebook friends who are watching on worship. Jack Key, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully. So a shout out to Jack. It's been awesome that he's been able to see worship and be included. So for those of you who are at home this morning, we're glad that you found us and you're here for worship. So welcome, welcome. Uh, this afternoon, 430 North Campus will be the annual meeting where we'll celebrate the awesome ministries of 2017 and take a look ahead for 2018, followed by, of course, our very favorite activity, right? To eat together, right? So followed by a fellowship meal afterwards, and uh, our young people, it's potluck, so bring your favorite potlucks. I've never seen a Lutheran potluck that was not enjoyed thoroughly. And uh, our young people are going to serve that, and then of course our donations and our gratitude to them help to go to their Houston, Houston trip, ELCA Youth Gathering, end of June, and the first couple days in July, just around the corner now. So... <laughs> also, next Saturday at 10.30 will be the Celebration of Life service for Lillian Nagelhoot. A couple of you were asking me about that. So Lillian Nagelhoot's Celebration of Life service next Saturday, North Campus, at 10.30. 10.30. So let's rise and begin our worship service together. <laughs> Loving God. We confess that we often turn from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly, or have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us and hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others and thought less of ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Even when we have turned away, God joins with us to renew us. God's love never runs out. God's love 
never runs out. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Share the Lord's peace with your neighbor. Please join us in a song of praise. Jesus himself. Yeah. 
young people to come forward. Come on up for kids news. Hey, good morning. You can stay standing. You can stay standing. Good morning. Hi, guys. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. So I have brought this with me, and you know what it is, right? It's a what? It's a pillow. It's a pillow, right? And so if I throw it at you, oh, you're going to let it hit the floor. If I throw it at you, what are you going to do? Catch it? What does it make you think about? What, what, if you get hit with a pillow, what do you want to do? Say it again? That's it exactly. Don't you want to take the pillow and toss it back? Andrew, <laughs> help me. Yeah, don't you have to come on, Cooper? Don't you want to, if somebody throws a pillow at you, don't want to, there we go, finally. Don't you want to throw it back? Doesn't it make you want to do a pillow fight? <laughs> Timing is everything, right? <laughs> How about you hold that? Timing is everything, right? But if you're playing, right? It's a pillow fight and it's soft, right? The pillow is soft, right? So we can throw that around at each other and it doesn't hurt, right? It's soft and that's different than what if I brought out a hammer? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Everybody's eyes got big and they backed up. What if I brought out a hammer? What, what happens if I throw that hammer? Not the same at all, is it? It doesn't make you want to play. It doesn't make you want to, <laughs> well, just get out of the way, right? It makes you want to run. It does. It does. If I pull out a hammer, it makes you want to run, right? And that's the whole point of our gospel today is that if we use a hammer, if we use our words like a hammer, it hits us and it strikes other people. You know that little jingle? Did you guys know with that jingle? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Did you grow up hearing that? Yes. Who grew up hearing that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that just rubbish? Yes. That is just untrue. Because our words matter. If you hit people or we're hit with other people's words that are hard like a hammer, it hurts. But you know what? We can still speak the truth in love in a way that it connects with somebody else. And they can actually maybe even hear what we have to say because that's not a hammer because that's speaking the truth in love in a way that people can hear it and that it makes a difference, right? Yeah. So that's the whole point of our gospel today. Let's have a prayer. Gracious God, watch over these, your beautiful children, your beautiful young people. Let all of us be reminded that sharing words make a difference and how we can share them truthfully but softly, so they can be received well. Watch over each of your young people this week so they know you're with them, beside them, and encourage them to find their voices in a way that makes a difference, like a pillow fight would make a difference, and be received well. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming up. See you next week. Thank you. We'll continue with the first lesson. A reading from 1 Corinthians. A reading from 1 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food, sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, or for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things, and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some, of, some have become accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered by, to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom, Jesus, whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience, when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Word of God, word of life. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen share with you a few things from the last couple days that have been going on. Yay! Yeah, take a look at that view. Yes. And the crowd erupts with applause. Woo! That's a pretty big deal. If you haven't been by 8812 this week, there are steel beams going up on the concrete. And take a look at this bird's eye view. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Thanks to Paul Bobin, that's a bird's eye view of some of the root trusses that have been put on 
Uh, that's the new worship center slash event center that we'll share with Plato Academy there at 8812. That is a sight to behold. So yes, if you haven't driven by, do that on your way. Make it a part of your way. Make it a part of your way at least one or more days per week and enjoy the energy and the momentum of seeing a new house of worship come together. It's truly inspiring. If you're wondering about dimensions, because this just blows my mind, so we measure the sportsplex. So from left to right, it's about 56 inches. And, or, or feet, 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 no, feet, 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 feet. And they, actually the worship center that we'll be moving into is 64 Four. feet, wow. left to right. Now the offices, the bank of offices in the kitchen are not beyond counted, that. that's yeah. beyond that. So just the word, yeah, exactly. It just kind of like, whoo, mind blowing, another epiphany experience. So it's gonna be larger than where you see these walls. Uh-huh. And if you measure from here back, it's 65 feet, which doesn't count the restrooms in the back and the sound booth. And 65 feet goes to the middle of that second to the last clear Plus. panel. That's 65 feet. Just in case you were wondering. Yeah, I would, yeah, isn't that, a, isn't that amazing when you get it actually measured out, measured out. The new worship space will be a space for 250 chairs, and it's going to be a privilege to reach out, make new friends, to have them there to come into that worship relationship with us, with Jesus. So that gives you an idea, I hope, on the spaciousness of what you're seeing in that cement block that maybe is one by one, right? <laughs> so again, that's a, a lot to, to imagine, and it's happening. Also what's happening is I had mentioned about 24 to Double, which is a discipleship program. We'll be finding out more about that at today's annual meeting, of course. And that's really an activation program of living out, being a priesthood of all believers. And so you're going to hear more about that as we move forward, too, so that we are ready to meet those who come to visit and make new friends. Um, something else I was going to say about that. It'll come back to me. Next shot, Taste of Trinity was, oh, I know what it was, making one more step toward the new facility. We're only going to be worshiping here at the Sportsplex this Sunday and next Sunday. This Sunday and next Sunday. And then we are going to head over to a different spot to worship for a few weeks so we can get some more visibility on County Road 54. So we're heading over to the frat house. <laughs> Woohoo! Had I more time, I really wanted a clip from Animal House. You are so right. Yeah! Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Yes, we're going to go to the frat house for just these last weeks until our facility is ready. And that, you already know the street to turn. You turn down the same street and you just take the first left behind the red Mexican restaurant and follow that around and you'll be right there. The idea is we'll have additional visibility signs that can be up on Sundays. And uh, we're going to start that on February 11th. February 11th. Yes, yes. So an awesome next step towards that new property and letting folks know the excitement that's going on at SOG. I'm not sure if everybody realizes what that frat house is. It's actually a banquet hall. Yeah. Yes. Good idea. I'm so glad you said that. You walk in and it's like a banquet hall. Totally, totally. That's exactly what the feeling is. Thank you with a little aroma of frat house. <laughs> Blend it in, yeah. Toga, toga, toga. Maybe we can have a big toga party when we leave. Boom, 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 boom. Yep, yep, exactly. There's a lot to celebrate. We're on the move, things are happening. Food fight, is that what you said, food fight? Did you say that? No, I said that was just a visual idea. <laughs> 
We'll continue with uh, what happened yesterday. Deb and I met Iron Man yesterday. Isn't that awesome? We were the taste. Yeah, we were the taste of Trinity, and we met Iron Man. So that was really a lot of fun getting out in the community. Thanks to everyone who came and served at the table yesterday, the community booth, um, to share about Spirit of Grace. And what we were handing out yesterday is, can you make that out? Jelly beans! Jelly beans! And inviting people to Easter worship, sunrise service on the beach. And that was so, so popular. Here's a mom holding her little girl, and look at that little Easter basket, little bucket right there. She said, no jelly beans, but she's holding onto that cute little basket. And uh, a good time was had by all, truly. Always good to be out in the community and sharing about Spirit of Grace. Epiphany, this is the fourth Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Again, that insider understanding that comes especially to identifying who Jesus is. In this gospel lesson of Mark, there's three what I'd call A-list themes. A-list themes. And here they are. It starts with, starts with astounding. If you listen to the gospel reading, the people were so astounded by what they heard and saw Jesus doing. Remember, in his day, in that culture, when Jesus came in, it was radical what he was saying. He was stretching and expanding and reframing their understandings of God in ways that they had never imagined or dreamed. Different ways they never imagined or dreamed they would worship at the sportsplex. They never imagined or dreamed they would worship at the frat house. They never imagined or dreamed these kinds of things. And yet God was on the move. God was working in Jesus Christ, doing radically different things than they ever expected. Because that's who God is. But Jesus sharing that, they were just astounded at what they were hearing. And then Jesus spoke with such authority. That's the first authority you heard in the scriptures, is how they heard him speaking not like they were accustomed to with the scribes, that he was speaking words that made an impact, that made a difference, that changed their lives. And the second time he spoke with authority, it removed an unclean spirit from a man. His words brought freedom. Jesus' words brought freedom that you can't find any place else. You can't get that freedom from public you can't get that freedom package from anything you buy on the internet. The words and the authority with which Jesus speaks releases our spirits, raises, unencumbers us, and lifts those burdens. That's the power and the authority with which Jesus speaks. And they were amazed. They were just blown away the authority with which he speaks. So that's been a companion with me through this week, preparing for this message that Jesus speaks with divine authority, and Jesus' words have the power to replace the reign of evil with the kingdom of God. Jesus' words have the power to replace the reign of evil with the kingdom of God, ushering in life, living that more fully, more abundantly, freedom, relieving those burdens, that's what the authority of Jesus does. What does that look like? In this word power and authority of Jesus, there is freedom. Freedom to live the life that God has bestowed upon us. What does that look like? There has been so much this week going on in our news that to me were just beacons of this gospel being lived out. And I want to show you a series of those things. Did you catch any of the things related to the Larry Nasser trial this week? Yeah, did you catch some of those? There is replacing the reign of evil with the kingdom of God. And here's just a couple clips from the very courageous women that spoke. Imagine feeling like you have no power and no voice. Well, you know what, Larry? I have both power and voice, and I am only beginning to just use them. All these brave women have power, and we will use our voices to make sure you get what you deserve. 
a life of suffering spent replaying the words delivered by this powerful army of survivors. I am also here to tell you to your face, Larry, that you have not taken gymnastics away from me. I love this sport and that love is stronger than the evil that resides in you and those who enabled you to hurt many people. You already know you're going away to a place where you won't be able to hurt anybody ever again. But I am here to tell you that I will not rest until every last trace of your influence on this sport has been destroyed like the cancer it is. Your abuse started 30 years ago, but that's just the first reported incident we know of. If over these many years just one adult listened and had the courage and character to act, this tragedy could have been avoided. I and so many others would have never, ever met you. So powerful are her words. Like the over 156 young women who came forward and spoke powerful words, pushing back and putting this responsibility where it belonged. And if one person, if one person, as she said, had the courage to have really listened and stepped up, how many of these young women would never have even gone through that? The power of words stepping up that courage that would have brought freedom to so many. And now through this process, that freedom comes in yet another and a different way. Listen to the next. This is what it looks like when institutions create a culture where a predator can flourish unafraid and unabated. Sexual abuse is so much more than a disturbing physical act. It changes the trajectory of a victim's life, and that is something that no one has the right to do. Children are worth everything, worth every protection the law can offer. The little girls don't see little forever. They grow into strong women that return to destroy your world. How powerful is that? Bringing words to speak and make a difference, individually and systemically. Because when we're a part of systems that just put reported files in file drawers and shut the drawers, that's a whole nother systemic problem and topic to be addressed. The other young woman, Rachel Den Hollander, is actually the niece of a family that goes to my husband's church at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. And last night at Saturday worship, one of the couples at worship said that their grandson is actually dating one of the young women that testified this week. Wow. Yeah. We, we may think it happens out there, but it doesn't happen out there. It happens in here. It happens in our communities to us. And these young women, their strength, their courage, their power, they are flipping that reign of evil and ushering in the kingdom of God in a literal, in an actual, in a very tangible way that brings new freedom to them and holds individuals and systems accountable to value that very gift of life that God has given us in the first place. Jesus speaks that divine authority that replaces that reign of evil by ushering in the kingdom of God. This is yet another example this week of that very gospel coming to life. Four months after Giovanna Calzadias was shot in the brain, doctors say her progress is nothing short of miraculous. Even though I will not be the same old Giovanna, I will come back stronger. She was at that now infamous country music festival in Las Vegas where a gunman opened fire. Doctors offered her husband, Frank, a grim prognosis. They all told me the same thing, that there was nothing they could do for Giovanna. Frank says there was even talk of removing Giovanna from life support. I had a dream that Giovanna visited me. She hugged me and kissed me and she said everything's going to be okay. I called her mom and I said we're keeping Giovanna alive. She's going to be all right. Nearly three weeks later, she was moved to the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, where slowly she improved. And now, 
I feel strong and positive. She's talking about her family. My kids and my family. I will not quit on them and I will not quit on myself. And the gunman. We will not let people like him win and we will not live in fear. As she prepares to leave the hospital tomorrow, she's offering these words of encouragement. Face of weather. <laughs> yes, we can. She has certainly proven she can. Joe Fryer, NBC News. How awesome is that? One of the survivors of that tragedy that over has overcome all of that suffering, step by step, day by day, to regain health and be able to say, I'm not going to be who I was. I'm going to come back even stronger, replacing the reign of evil by ushering in the kingdom of God, not allowing a gunman and a shooter to have the last word because we know it is grace that wins, grace in our struggle, grace in our sufferings, that it is grace that wins. She's speaking to that very thing. And one more clip. Look at the power of these seven words. T-shirt in Disney World for nine days straight. You know, I came up with the idea because I think it's out of desperation. You know, I look at my kids, you know, when I'm with my kids, it's, it, all my problems go away. And I needed more time with them. 60-year-old Rob Leibowitz is a single father of five. He lives in New Jersey by way of Brooklyn. A couple who saw him wearing the t-shirt in Disney in August snapped a photo and shared it on Facebook. It went viral. 30,000 shares in the first 24 hours. Leibowitz got calls from strangers across the country. Absolutely surprised. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm surprised that everything went <laughs> with, with, with help from strangers. But not everyone was a match until this voicemail. Hi, my name's Richie. I saw your post. I have an, an, uh, an extra kidney. I'm an O positive. Um, you're more than welcome to have it. Richie Sully is from Indiana. He's also a single dad of two little girls. He took off from work and paid to stay in a New York hotel for two weeks. They've spent time together every day. We walked around Manhattan for like six hours and we had sushi and he took me to Times Square and we just, we talked about music and about being dads and, and things like that. Um, and really hit it off. He underwent surgery beside his new friend on Thursday at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Today, Richie Sully can report that donating a kidney is actually an easier procedure than most think. I asked him why did he do it. He said because he could. It's not a big deal. And I've talked to several donors in the last week that have all said the same thing. Like if we could get people to understand how much of a big deal it's not, we would have so many more donors. But for Rob Leibowitz and his family, it was a huge deal. You know, Richie here is Mr. Humble, but he's from Indiana, so he's 10% nicer than everybody else to begin with. But, you know, I, I keep saying thank you, thank you. You know, you can't put it into words, what he did for me. So I'll have to figure out to do how to do that the best I can for the rest of my life. In Midtown, I'm Christy Duffy. going to figure out how to do that the rest of this life, showing appreciation and bringing thankfulness for the gift of life, someone who actually gave their kidney. Stranger, what those seven words did, those seven words went viral in our social media culture and made a huge difference, ushering in the reign of God. Amazing, powerful. That's the power and the authority that Jesus' words bring and make a difference. And we're today's disciples to be ushering in that difference, ushering in that freedom, making sure that God's kingdom is in, in reign. And how does that happen? How do we do that? We do that too with our words. That it makes a difference what we say, how we say it, who we say it to and when. Our words really do matter. That little old rhyme, sticks and stones will break my bones and words will never hurt me. It was just one of the worst things to teach a kid because they know better. They know that words are harmful or words are upbuilding. And we can be those people who speak the truth in love. It doesn't mean you back down from speaking the truth. Look at the truth. These women have spoken, 156 of them. Each of their stories critical and important. 
to overturning the reign of evil. Their words do matter and they're speaking it powerfully and in the right time. So our words do matter. And here are some of the hows that we can make a difference. Very often now we're hearing, see something, say something. Bring what we see and what we're aware of to voice. Say something, make a difference. And when someone comes to us, if they have found inside the courage to share that they are being harmed or in a harmful experience or relationship, and they have the courage to share that with us, we have just been given a sacred trust. And ours is the opportunity as Jesus' disciples to take that sacred trust and make sure that that gets to the right person in the right place at the right time who can make a difference and bring an end to that harm and to usher in the kingdom of God. That sacred trust, be aware, be listening, because you could be used in that way to make a difference. How many of those women said that reports and people were told, if but one person had listened, if but one had the courage to speak up with that sacred trust and keep speaking and keep speaking until a difference is made. See something, say something. Speak the truth in love. Speaking reality into denial, that is never easy. But if we speak the truth in love, we're not wielding hammers with our words. We're not pounding people down. We're walking, companioning, being with, and speaking the truth in love that overturns the reign of evil. Speaking justice into evil. Let's just take a look. You know, our confession said that this morning. Our confession talked about this very thing. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly or not spoken or acted at all. We're confessing that so that we are open to listening and being used and using effectively that sacred trust if it comes to us. And Think about the Lord's Prayer, what that says, how Jesus wanted his people to live in that kingdom of God and to be an effective part of ushering us in. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. When you pray that, you are praying that this happens. Deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. Maybe we be the ones who are listening and being sure to help usher in the full kingdom of God. Amen. Amen.
salvation hears us, let us pray. For peace and justice throughout the world, for political leaders at all levels, and for those who provide public services, that you will grant them wisdom as they carry out their tasks. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the homeless, the unemployed, the underemployed, and their advocates, for the sick, the suffering, and their caregivers, and for the weak in body, mind, and spirit, that your compassion be felt by all in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those in our congregation celebrating special events, for those missing from our worship today, and for our friends and family, both near and far, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Gracious God, we pray for those who are battling and struggling with cancer, Newly diagnosed with cancer, Lynn Plaster, Karen Beaton's niece in her late 40s, a stage four diagnosis. And we pray, Lord, your spirit comforts and walks with them. Edward Ayer, Sharon Bellick's brother, facing hospice very soon. Mariano in the hospital this week, and his wife Beth to strengthen them for Dan and June and Betty and Lou, and all those whom we name in our hearts who are facing and battling with cancer. <clears throat> we thank you for all that can be done that the medical community can bring to bear to help our lives heal, for our, their bodies to be whole. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Our prayers continue for Chuck's friend, Doug, and also for Paul Bowman's dad, Ron, for Edith Osterling, for Steve Kometz, for Lois McDevitt, Jean Cortier, all those who are struggling with ill health at this time. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. As we sing, I am free to live for you, Lord, 
Even in the midst of struggle and suffering, it is your presence that reminds us there is freedom in you. There is freedom in your kingdom that brings mercy, that brings accountability and justice, that brings grace, where grace wins every time, even when it doesn't look like it, even when there's darkness. Your grace penetrates that with light and love. We pray, Lord, for those who have experienced the shooting in Kentucky. It is hard to find words again, even saying again for those who have experienced this, two young lives senselessly wiped out. I don't know how their parents even are able to breathe, find the next breath. Gracious God, send your mercies. Send your people with new understanding. Can we listen and communicate in ways that honor you, that understand? Can we bring a stop to bullying? Can we bring a stop to somehow people thinking that picking up a gun is a solution? Help us listen to those whose hearts are aching that turn to solutions that obliterate and wipe out people rather than lift people up. Use us to listen, to carry that sacred trust forward in a way that matters and actually ushers in your kingdom. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God, for all the women who testified this week, for all the Larry Nassers that are wired that way or somehow think it's okay to infringe upon someone's dignity that way. We entrust into your ultimate mercies, Lord. Let us be the ones who can bring voice to those who struggle and suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak them. Receive them for the sake of the one through whom you have revealed your ultimate goodness. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us here with us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup from the table. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We who are many are one body, partaking of one bread. Come and be filled with light and life. All are welcome at this Lord's table. Amen. Oh, 
O oh, morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Call you beloved and shine brightly on your path. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 Sin, in my doubt, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubles. You are the peace in my troubles. Oh, oh. 